per definition, Angular is a component-based framework for building scalable web applications. Angular was started as a side project at Google by a developer named Mishko Havery, who started as a side project to help him develop some internal applications. It was named AngularJS because you could write JavaScript code inside HTML, which has Angular brackets. Angular was really famous for several years after its initial release, but more and more developers started to use it and it could not really keep up with all the demand or expectations that developers started to have for this framework. The core team was doing the best they could to improve this framework so they could meet the high demands, but the core team had reached a limit to what they could do to improve the framework for the growing demands. The team at Google decided to develop a new framework from ground up, which they named just Angular. At this time, the AngularJS had lots of developers still using it, so they supported both frameworks, the AngularJS and Angular, for more years to come. As of 1st January 2022, AngularJS has hit its end of life and is no longer supported. However, Angular has reached version 14 with lots of improvements along the way. Version 14 is also the version that we're going to use throughout this course. I'll not dive too much into the details in here, but if you want to learn more about how AngularJS was started and how it evolved to Angular 14, which is the currently the stable version, you can check out this link. This is a blog post that I've written for this course. In here you can find lots of information about different versions of Angular. The Angular applications are known to be very well structured and with a clear separation of concerns. But how are the Angular apps organized from a really high level standpoint? The highest level of architecture are the modules. You can think of the modules as a group of components with related assets. Organizing your code into modules helps you manage development of complex applications and in designing it helps you reuse your code. This technique also lets you take advantage of lazy loading, that is, loading modules on demand, which is used to minimize the amount of code that is needed to be loaded at startup. Every Angular application has at least one component, and that is the application component, which is also known as the application entry component and is configured by default to be the startup file. You are going to see that configuration on the upcoming parts. It's important to know that each component defines a class that contains application data and logic, and is also associated with an HTML template that defines a view to be displayed in a target environment. A template or an HTML template combines HTML code with Angular code that can modify the HTML elements before they are displayed. For data or logic that is not associated with a specific view and that you want to share across components, you create a service class. And for you to be able to use these service classes, you need to inject these classes in the components. And if we were to visualize what we have talked so far, this would be an example. So here we have the Angular application and in this application we have two modules. The first module has three components. The second one has two components. We have on the third component of the first module an injection, so a dependency injection of a service. And on the second module, both components have a service injection. Now, this is really just an overview more than an architectural design. And I'm sure that this might confuse you at first, but as we move to the next part, everything is going to get clearer. 